Hey, this is Wileen Benson, and you are on the Daily Gratitude Call, where we start every day in gratitude. Gratitude is the highest energy state that we can be in. It creates a frequency of positive vibration that attracts positive experiences into our lives. Hey everybody, this is Wileen Benson. This is our Daily Gratitude Call. Um, thank you for being on our call live and also thank you to those who are listening to the podcast. Um, I encourage you to share this link if this uh, particular podcast ends up being something that's really inspiring to you or if it is um, something that you feel like would support another person, I encourage you to share this. Uh, we create these in the moment, so I have no idea <laughs> how this is going to play out, what the, uh, you know, what the, the message of the call is going to be overall, but, or what the message to you is specifically, um, but I know that every single day it is awesome. Monday through Friday, you can just plan on this gratitude to call being an awesome place to start your day, and uh, also something that's going to be there and um, as a resource ready for you to be able to use and serve for, um, use for yourself and also serve others with it. Um, that's what we're going to focus on today is gratitude for reliable patterns. And this gratitude calls one of those things that somebody mentioned earlier, uh, before we started the recording that they're grateful that they can rely on this gratitude call on a weekly basis. And, and I feel like, um, especially in times of uncertainty, it's really awesome to have some solid things you can rely on. Um, so let's, uh, um, I'm gonna set a timer for 90 seconds and we're going to have a private silent meditation on gratitude for reliable patterns. Begin. All right, um, my thoughts kind of took a, an interesting turn. Um, it almost felt a little bit negative, but I'm gonna share. I've had uh, some client calls um, over the last couple of days um, this week where um, patterns have emerged and it's been really interesting how um, we as a person wanting something to be different we keep expecting someone else to show up you know the other person to show up a, a different way when they've given us evidence after evidence after evidence that they're going to continue showing up the way that they show up um, we can't really change another person and so we can only expect that they're going to continue to show up the same way that they have proven over and over and over again that they're going to show up until they decide to change um, we do have a lot of control over how we feel about it. We have a control over beliefs that we have about the person. You know, if I'm constantly saying, um, oh, I'm afraid that he's going to, you know, react this way because I've got all this evidence that he has in the past, he or she has in the past, 
then we're going to continue to perpetuate that. So we could definitely, I can definitely change my beliefs is I am hoping for, or I'm looking forward to the day when, or I'm excited to see a change in behavior. So we can start, you know, we can change the way that we speak instead of saying, oh, I hope he doesn't, or I am afraid that he will do this or won't do this or whatever. We can definitely change the way that our words come across so that we create a different energy and invite the person to show up a little bit differently. But until they decide to make that change, they're going to continue to, um, you know, in that pattern. And it's something that we can actually rely on um, until we change the way we think about it, the way we speak about it, the way we believe, then that pattern's not going to change until they make the choice that they're going to change. They're not going to change. Um, so whether that's good or bad, ugly, pretty, whatever, <laughs> that is, um, that's what came up for me. And it's kind of like we're fooling ourselves if we expect it to be different unless something changes. Who else has something that they would like to share? I'll share. Hey, Phil. What if we didn't have reliable patterns? What if, what if, uh, what if organisms didn't uh, vibrate together? What if they were erratic? Mm. And they had a mind of their own and would do as they pleased all the time. Uh, what if they weren't completely obedient? Um, just think of the chaos that that would bring. Mm -hmm. uh, we couldn't exist. Our, our, our world as we know it would not be. And so I have great those elements, you know, that they, they always, their, their patterns were always reliable. Always. Oh. Beautiful. If Thank electronics you. wouldn't work. <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. So true. Thank you. And you know, when God created the earth, he set up these patterns, these predictable patterns and even physical law that, that always has existed. God used those physical laws to, you know, to put things into place. And really we are the only component that has choice everything else that God set up, the seasons, the way that the, you know, sun and the moon phases and, you know, all of those things, those were all set up in the beginning and they're reliable patterns. We as a human being are the only piece that has a choice. And when we align ourselves with that, when we become very reliable as well, that's like the easiest path because we're working in tandem with all of those physical laws instead of trying to fight against them and thinking, Oh, I wish, you know, I could do this and still get this and things that don't, don't match up. Thank you, Phil. Who else? I'll, I'll share. Um, I'm just really, really grateful for the reliable, healthy patterns that bring consistent feelings of joy that raise my, my vibration and my mm -hmm. thinking. Um, things get done when I stick to healthy patterns. Um, um, and waking up to new patterns is, in our life is a process. It's um, something that, you know, and you're right, nobody can, nobody can make someone change. It's a process. It's an awakening. Um, even when we get to bed later than normal, I've heard it said over the, you know, my lifetime that, you know, still get up at the same time. Mm -hmm. And I don't know what that, I don't know what the pattern is or the reason is for that pattern. But, um, but I um, just really grateful for the simple, reliable patterns that um, serve me and raise me um, to keep going in a certain direction. Beautiful. Thank you. I've, you know, I, I've heard that as well, um, too, with the, you know, getting up at the, at the same time, regardless if you go to bed late or whatever. And I think, you know, maybe a principle behind that is just get back into your healthy pattern as quickly as possible. Because, you know, it's like when you go to a doctor's office and they're like half an hour behind schedule, it's a lot of times because the first person who came was you know, five minutes late, and then somebody else later in the day was, you know, 
another five minutes late. And by the time you get there, it's like 30 minutes, they're 30 minutes behind schedule. If we just like get ourselves back on track immediately, then it's just a little blip on the screen. It doesn't, you know, push everything forward. Thank you. Or push everything back, maybe. <laughs> Who else? This is Rachel. I'll share. Thanks, Rachel. I've been having thoughts about chaos and being comfortable with chaos mm -hmm. and realizing it's part of a new pattern creating. And sometimes I want to shove it away or not want to be a part of it or be in it because it feels uncertain or uncomfortable. But I'm learning that creation happens in chaos and it's part of the pattern, creating the new pattern. Beautiful. Thank you. It's an awesome way to look at it. And you're right. You know, when God created the earth, he, he took matter that was unorganized and formed it into the earth and, and used this principle and that principle and kind of brought everything together so that we, we had this pattern of abundance. And uh, I'm sure that it looked like total destruction in the beginning. There was probably volcanic activity and you know, all kinds of crazy stuff going on when that earth was being created, um, but there was purpose behind it. So maybe putting purpose within our chaos and allowing ourselves to be in that un, uncomfortable kind of messy, you know, if you clean out a closet, you're making a huge mess to start with before you, you know, create this beautiful um, pattern of organization. Thank you. Michael, did you have something? Yeah, I have a thought. Okay. I was thinking that um, I, I know that I do this, that will happen. Mm -hmm. I have a pattern of often, um, turning a light on, and I believe, you know, that's going to light up the room. I go out to my car and I have a pattern of just starting it. And it's a diesel, so you got to wait for it to warm up. Otherwise, I'd be out and running before it was ready. But I was sitting here thinking about um, uh, a tape measure, the increments on it. They're reliable pattern. When you look at it, you know every little increment, what it means and how far it goes. And if you have a, a dress, um, you have a reliable pattern that mm -hmm. you lay on the and you cut it out and you know you're going to make a dress out of it. If you're building a house, you have a reliable blueprint. Somebody else probably built it using the same blueprint. And you have the, the blueprint that shows you what you need to do and where you need to put it. And uh, when I cut out form or when you make rafters and stuff, you, the first board is a pattern. And everything you cut, you just glue that pattern down and you make everything according to that cut. And so we create a reliable pattern to help us accomplish things when we're working on them. And I think that's even uh, forms that we use in work. We have a reliable form that as we fill it in, in the pattern that we set up, then it's easier for us to uh, uh, transfer the information to another place where it needs to go. So, Beautiful. yes, reliable patterns are like, uh, to me, like tape measure that has increments in it. Mm -hmm. We set it up, we use it continually to make our life easier. Thank you, our lives and other people's lives too. I, I love that idea of, you know, the standard measurements that we have, whether it be metric or, you know, the, the measurements that we use here in the U.S. that we can depend on. If I buy a tape measure, I know that the inches are going to be, I, I actually bought a ruler once that the, the inches were off, that the, the spacing was off and had to throw it away because, you know, it wasn't according to the standard measurement. Um, also, this um, idea of creating a pattern, the first one that you do might take you a while to get it exactly perfect, you know, like the rafters like you were talking about, or making, if you're designing a dress from scratch and creating a pattern, but then once you have created the pattern, 
then other people can follow it. <clears throat> I made some hamburger buns yesterday out of a pretzel recipe because <clears throat> my favorite buns are those like really thick, chewy <laughs> hamburger buns. And, um, and I, I made them, you know, just using the same recipe, but the cooking, the baking time, because these were like pretzel bites, which are only, you know, like an inch or two, like two inches big. And I was making this big, thick bun. And so I had to guess on the measurement and the inside was just a teeny bit doughy, but I was able to cut it open and put it back under the broiler and just toast it up a little bit. And it was great. Um, but I was able to establish the, the cooking time based on this first time. I was a little bit off, still worked out. Um, but now next time I wrote that in the recipe, if I'm making hamburger buns to only cut it into eight pieces, roll them in balls, you know, and then cook them, bake them for 30 to 35 minutes. So that's that um, kind of practical application of what you're saying, Michael. Thank you. So a lot of trial and error, and you create a, a pattern, and it's a, something you rely on to accomplish that same goal each time you try it. Yeah. So now you guys can all make hamburger buns out of your pretzel recipes. <laughs> awesome. Thank you. Um, any last thoughts before we shift over to our permission process? What? Yeah, just real quick, Waylene. So just kind of going back to, um, I love what Rachel was saying and um, just um, something that um, God has blessed me with is um, in the last several months, there's been a lot of, sorry, there's been a lot of chaos in my life. And um, I am deeply grateful for that because it has given me the perfect opportunity to find and clear so many of my limiting beliefs. And in the middle of that, it has given me the greatest situations to learn that I can live on neutral ground always. It mm -hmm. does not matter what I'm going through, that I can find and live on neutral ground always. And um, the third thing it has helped me do is to find the deepest strength within myself. And so I am, I am deeply grateful for those situations that do create chaos and allow us to do those things. Well, beautiful. Thank you. That's the greatest gift I feel is when you have found that place where, you know, your emotions are not, they don't go up and down based on your outside circumstances that we can remain at peace and calm and neutral and in a place of um, so that we can actually be used um, if we're caught up in the chaos then we're we're pretty useless and um, except to you know add to the problems and um, I, I just feel like that is such a, and, and I've noticed that within you, Tammy, as we've had our conversations that um, you are, it, it's like we're building such uh, that that's a place where you can actually start creating when you're okay with stepping outside of your comfort zone and being in the unknown. When you're in that, that chaos of, all the things that are that exist outside of what you currently know and you can still be standing there straight up upright tall confident opening your eyes looking around seeing all the opportunity within it that's the place where creation really happens thank you let's go ahead and shift over to our permission process this is a great energy and understanding to be shifting over into a place of creation for our for yourselves right now let's go ahead and take a deep breath and allow yourself to be in a space of 
um, just listening and um, actually wanting to know what um, possibly some of the limiting beliefs are or um, being completely okay with allowing whatever comes to you because and, and feeling that confidence that you know you can handle anything that anything new that comes your way it's just a new experience it's just an opportunity and nothing to be nothing to fear take one more deep breath and right now in this moment i invite you to um kind of create a vision of what your comfort zone looks like right now so family habits money personal health relationships any other any of the areas of your life that are coming up for you right now just kind of paint a picture of what has been comfortable in the past what you've allowed to be part of your world and allow even if you have felt you know some anxiety or um, doubt about yourself anxiety or um, insecurity about the future any of those things just allow whatever has been part of your current comfort zone to just be right now and what we have viewed as comfort zone just to invite you to see all the chaos that actually exists within what we have considered to be normal normal peaceful comfortable whatever you would use as a description of your quote comfort zone just notice the chaos that actually exists already And as you're becoming more aware that chaos actually does exist, we're in our comfort zone. I just invite you to look outside of your comfort zone. Maybe, you know, what, however that looks to you, whether it's looking out the window, if it's taking a peek out the door, if it's, you know, pulling up the blinds, whatever that looks like to you. Just imagine yourself taking a peek outside and knowing that chaos actually exists within the comfort zone and we've been able to be comfortable with it take a look outside and see what actually exists beyond this comfort zone that we have shielded ourselves against with the thought or the belief that it's too chaotic out there what really exists out there And what are you learning about comfort zone and what exists outside of your comfort zone? And as you're getting more clear with what really is, what is the one most important thing that you could do today to find peace within chaos, to find calm, to find neutral ground as tammy mentioned within chaos what's the one most important thing that you can do today what's your inspired shortcut to neutral ground to solid ground to feeling strong and confident and, and at peace And then what's your limiting belief? What's the limiting belief that's showing up for you right now? And if you hold on to that limiting belief, we know that every limiting belief comes with a cost. There is a result that that limiting belief will bring. Is that going to serve you? What's the cost of that limiting belief? If you're beginning to see that this, the cost of that limiting belief is too great and it's not going to serve you, you can actually give yourself permission to choose something different. And so if you're ready to give yourself permission to choose a new belief, say yes. 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 Awesome. 
Yeah. Awesome. So what are those new beliefs? Let's get two or three new beliefs that will take the place of that old limiting belief will empower you to be on solid ground, to be on neutral ground, to remain calm, be at peace, be strong, confident within whatever kind of chaos might be happening around you. What are those new beliefs that are going to empower you to be able to remain in your comfort zone or take a step outside of your comfort zone, whatever you choose and whatever, wherever you're at, that you're going to feel that, that, uh, solid confidence. What are those new beliefs? And once you have two or three new beliefs, I invite you to uh, take a look at those new beliefs. And as you're, you're um, looking at these new beliefs, I invite you to see what kind of patterns are these new beliefs going to produce. Our old limiting belief was producing a reliable pattern. There was something that we knew that we could expect, regardless of what other changes we made in our lives, as long as that limiting belief existed, it's going to continue to create a pattern. What are these new beliefs going to create? What is the reliable pattern that we can expect that um, will be produced from this, from these new beliefs? And just like has been suggested, it might take a little bit of time to get that, um, to get that pattern made. But then once the pattern is made, it's easy to follow and we can expect a predictable result. So what is that reliable pattern, the predictable result that can be produced with these new beliefs? And will, it, will that pattern empower you to be stable, to be solid, to be, um, you be reliable and consistent with your patterns? And then one last step is to, again, see yourself inside your current surroundings, inside your comfort zone, and how does that feel? What's changed? Has the chaos inside the comfort zone changed? Or is it just your view of it? Or the way that you feel? What's changed? And then take a look outside of that comfort zone into the unknown. And what are the new feelings that you have about stepping outside of your comfort zone? And make note of how those feelings have changed as well. We are at the end of our time, so we won't have time to share today. I encourage you to go to the Breakthrough with Gratitude Facebook group and share your thoughts there. We'd love to hear your, um, your new beliefs and your experience that you've had. And if you've made some new commitments of stepping outside your comfort zone, we'd love to be that uh, place where you get to go and commit to that um, so that other people know what, what your next steps are. We'd love to to be that support system for you. And um, also, if you're feeling like you need to have a private conversation with me about something that has come up on this call, please go to askwileen.com. That takes you directly to my calendar and you can schedule a 15 minute call. Askwileen.com, super simple, easy. You can find a time that is convenient for you. Uh, it's free and uh, that's just an opportunity for us to have connect and to, to see what's next for you. Um, see things from a slightly different perspective. Thank you everyone for being on the call today. We'll look forward to being back together again, 7 a.m. Mountain Time tomorrow morning and excited to read about your experience on the Breakthrough with Gratitude Facebook group. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, thanks so much for listening. And I encourage you to tune in every day to the Daily Gratitude Call. And the Daily Gratitude Call happens live every weekday morning. I'd love to have you join. So to find out how to join live, go to my website, wileenbenson.com. Thanks for tuning in.